In my first installment of my series on tank markings, I looked over how the Soviet tank identification system worked. This video will focus on what system the German army used. I will focus on the German armored divisions which fought on Hungarian soil, namely those which at one point or another were operational under Army Group South during late 1944 through 1945. All the sources used in this video will be linked in the description, and links to the chapter markings are also provided for your viewing pleasure. The German tank marking system was simpler when compared to the Soviet implementation due to the uniformity across all its armored units. However, due to a number of decisions, some of which will be discussed in this video, it is actually just as difficult to identify German tanks as it is for Soviet tanks. My organization of armor video went over how the German tank regiment looked. This video will use that information as a starting point and dive a bit further. The German tank regiment had two main alterations in 1944, which resulted in the reduction of the unit strength, but also allowed for a more realistic organization given the late war circumstances. The Germans used five main marking levels to identify their tanks with the divisional level markings sometimes removed, as was the case in the Hungarian sector of operations, to facilitate better German counterintelligence measures. Post-war, however, this creates difficulties in tank identification. The German numbering system can be better understood through a visual representation. Let's look at how an early 1944 Panzer Regiment was organized. The Panzer Regiment was commanded by eight tanks, three for communications and five for reconnaissance. The first battalion's command was set up in an identical way. A battalion had four companies of 17 tanks each, two command tanks and three platoons of five tanks. The first battalion usually held the best vehicles such as the Panther tank. The second battalion was set up identically to the first. However, the vehicles would be of an older generation commonly filled with the Panzer IVs. Now we can examine the marking basics used on German tanks. Each tank would have three digits painted on the turret, with the first representing the company, the second representing the platoon, and the third representing the vehicle number. A Roman numeral would indicate which battalion the tank was commanding, a Latin letter indicating regiment command, and a zero anywhere within the three digits to indicate its command designation. Marking paint schemes would vary, however, these would be consistent within a single company. Filling out this chart with markings, we can better understand how simple this marking system actually was, along with how easy it would have been for the Soviets to read. Due to the high losses of German armor in 1943, the 1944 Table of Organization had to drastically reduce the authorized overall strength of a Panzer Regiment. As the war continued to move against the Germans' favor, the authorized strength was again reduced in late 1944 to give units some chance of being able to be combat capable. With these markings under our belt, let's begin to identify a couple of tanks from wartime photographs. Beginning with a difficult one, this tank was from a Panzer Regiment's 1st Battalion, 2nd Company, 1st Platoon, and was the 2nd Vehicle. Because we cannot see a divisional emblem as these were removed in Hungary during 1945, we must use external information to fully identify this tank. In a second photograph of Tank 212, we can see it has been knocked out by the Soviets who placed their trophy marking, number 35, on the Panther's side. This tank was knocked out just south of Bolaton Kenesha. In this third photograph, this time of the vehicle collection station at Bolaton Fusfe, northwest of Bolaton Kenesha along the shore of Lake Bolaton, we again see Tank 212. We know that tanks from the 1st SS Panzer Division, Liebstandart SS Adolf Hitler, commanded by the well known General Joachim Piper, fought and were destroyed around Bolaton Kenesha and were dragged to this collection station. Therefore, we can confidently say that tank 212 was from the 1st SS Panzer Division. 
This tank's markings again offers incomplete information. We can know that this was the 1st Battalion's command tank because of its Roman numeral 1 and 0, and the 2 indicates that this was the 2nd command vehicle of the 1st Battalion's command staff. Some sources put this tank as from the 3rd SS Panzer Division Totenkopf, therefore we can only assume that this tank was specifically from the 3rd SS Panzer Division, 1st Battalion, 2nd Command Vehicle. This vehicle is easier to identify. The large 521 tells us this tank was part of the 2nd Battalion, 5th Company, and the lead vehicle in the 2nd Platoon. The shield emblem on the turret's backside is the simplified coat of arms of the schoenburg waldenburg royal family, to whose son, Prince Wilhelm, was given the command of the 2nd Battalion of the 130th Panzer Division. This photograph of tank 521 is taken in Budapest during the German invasion of Operation Margaret. This tank has an unusual marking system implemented, however it is easy to understand. AJ9 is the adjutant, that is second in command, of the 9th Regiment. This unit opted to use AJ as opposed to the usual Latin R to identify this tank. AJ9 is photographed here beside the village of Vilonia, self-destructed by its crew on March 23rd of 1945. The 9th SS Panzer Division Hohenstaufen was operational in this location and the regimental marking asserts this. Therefore, we can say that tank AJ-9 is from the 9th SS Panzer Division, 9th SS Panzer Regiment, Regiment Command Tank 2. Next, let's move on to the heavy Panzer Battalion markings. Consisting of 45 tanks at max capacity, a heavy Panzer Battalion would have 3 Battalion Command Tanks and 3 companies of 14 tanks each. The numbering scheme on this chart was used by the 503rd and 509th heavy panzer battalions, both of which fought in Hungary. The 501st SS Heavy Panzer Battalion, which also fought in Hungary, had a different marking system, with a couple oddities here and there. SS Panzer Battalions differed from their Wehrmacht counterparts in that they were attached to an SS Panzer Corps and could be transferred within that corps only. Heavy Panzer companies, such as the 9th Heavy Company under the 3rd SS Panzer Division Totenkopf, were again arranged in a different manner. The 9th Company of the 3rd SS Panzer Division also fought in Hungary. In this winter photo, we can clearly see the big Roman numeral 1 in the back and the left side of this King Tiger. The three-pronged antenna on the tank's back also indicates that this was a command vehicle. This photo was part of a series of photographs from the 509th Heavy Panzer Battalion, allowing us to fully identify this tank. This tank bears a Soviet trophy marking of 336, telling us that this tank was knocked out late in a Soviet offensive. Judging by the terrain, this photograph was taken in the springtime. The German marking of 205 tells us that this was a command tank for the battalion's second company. The markings also coincide with those of the 501st SS Heavy Panzer Battalion. Taking a look at the 1st SS Panzer Division's order of battle for March 5, 1945, we can see that the 1st SS Panzer Regiment's 2nd Battalion was missing and was instead replaced by the 501st SS Heavy Panzer Battalion. This information allows us to fully identify all the information about this tank. Tiger 934 makes it obvious that this tank was part of an additional company attached to its tank regiment. Because it is a heavy tank, the options of which unit it was part of is greatly reduced. This tank was part of the 9th Company of the 3rd SS Panzer Regiment of the 3rd SS Panzer Division, Totenkopf. An interesting form of marking visible on most German tanks is the Balkenkreuz, a small cross emblem for the German military. The placement of this emblem on each tank was up to the manufacturer's discretion, but more importantly, the placement allows us to analyze which factory a tank was produced in. This information can be of great use when trying to pinpoint very specific details about individual tanks. In the case of Panther tanks, Mann put the Balkan Cruise on the front corner of the side, Daimler Benz put the Balkan Cruise in the middle of the tank's side, and MNH put the Balkan Cruise on the turret of the tanks that it produced. The final tank marking is the Fargestell number, or in English, the chassis number. For Panther tanks, this was a six-digit code painted on the lower front plate of the tanks, 
where the first three digits represented the factory in which the tank was produced. Thank you for viewing this video. For more information on Hungary during World War II, check out my other videos on the World War II Hungary YouTube channel. Leave a like and please subscribe for more related content. Bye for now.